you know that there are millions of people who walk the streets yet aren't free? Did you know that some people in jail are actually free? Are you one of those who walk the streets of your city but aren't free? Listen to this lecture about being truly free. The Bible gives us an interesting story in the book that helps us consider what true freedom is. In Philemon, verse 1, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved, and fellow laborer. Interesting, even though Paul was a prisoner in Rome, he didn't consider himself a Roman prisoner. He called himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And all freedom says in verse 8, Wherefore, though I might be much bold or free in Christ to enjoy, enjoin thee that which is convenient. Isn't it so beautiful that despite being in prison, Paul says that Christ gives him a great freedom because it is only through him that we can find true freedom. While in jail, Paul wrote a letter to Philemon a rich man who was disappointed with his slave named Onesimus. The letter was written to intercede for the slave Onesimus. In those days, slavery was normal. Millions of slaves enlisted. Slaves were objects that were machinery of those days. They were bought and sold and many of them were marked as if they were animals. A slave could have a wife and children, but every one of them belonged to his owner. In the first part of verse 18, it clearly expressed that he betrayed his master. One day, Onesimus got tired of living as a slave, wishing to be free. He took something that belonged to his owner and escaped. He went hundreds of kilometers away to Rome. I can just imagine Onesimus traveling from town to town trying to be free. Yet also see him worried, distressed, and frightened because he could be found at any moment. Onesimus fled from his master remembered him morning, noon, and night. His master could appear any moment. He was free, yet he was enslaved by his own actions, his memories, his conscience, and his sin. Today, slavery is rare. But there are millions of people who are slaves to their conscience, to vices, to anger, to the pleasure of life to negative thoughts or to sins. Are you one of those people? John 8 verse 34 says, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth a sin is the servant of sin. If we are far from Jesus, we are slaves to sin. Proverbs says, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Onesimus went to Rome, fleeing from his master, from his duty, from his work. But when he arrived in Rome, fleeing from his master, he, he met Paul, the servant of the Lord. We might think that this happened by chance, but no, God was looking for Onesimus. Just as God is looking for you. God often allows situations to happen in our lives for a certain purpose. Let's remember when God allowed Joseph to be sold so that he could have an encounter with him. 
Or when the leper, who was scared of people because of his illness, timidly approached Christ, who was waiting for him at the outskirts of the city to meet him. Remember, when Jesus went into search of the Samaritan woman during the hottest day, or when Jesus guided the paralytic to heal him, there are countless stories in the Bible that teach us that Jesus is always in search to help us. And Jesus is searching for you. The Bible says in Psalms 139, Verse 1 to 3. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all my ways. And in Jeremiah 23 24, it says, Can any hide himself in secret places? that I shall not see him, saith the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Wherever we go, the Lord will be there. It doesn't matter where we go, how far away we are, or how dark it is. Christ will always be with us. In verse 10, Paul says, Whom I have forgotten in my bonds. When anything has escaped, He thought he was free for some reason, but unfortunately, he was imprisoned by his conscience, by his bad habits, his sin. In Rome, he again misbehaved, was therefore imprisoned. It was there in prison that he met a truly free man, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a great evangelist. He took advantage of every opportunity to help people to get to know Christ. In prison, Paul met Onesimus and did not hesitate to share the message with him. This is interesting. Two prisoners meet Paul, was physically a prisoner, and Onesimus was physically and spiritually imprisoned. In John 8, 32, the Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth make you free. In John 14, 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. True freedom can only be experienced when we are with Jesus. We are truly free in him. There are millions of people who are physically free, but are spiritually prisoners. Onesimus being one of them. He fled far from his master, escaped his errors so that he could be free. Yet, he found himself worse from of slavery, in an imprisonment that never left him, a prison that was spiritual. It says in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. The Bible is the word of God. We find the balm of our souls in it. And thanks to it, many people have found freedom. The Bible helps us live a pure and free life according to God's will by keeping his commandments. After having fled for so long, Onesimus finally met Jesus. He was born again and thus became a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What an interesting change. Onesimus found freedom at last. He found true freedom behind bars in prison next to the Apostle Paul. He was now a truly free man. Verse 11 teaches us that Onesimus goes from being useless to being useful. 
When we are far from God, we become runaway, a useless slave where nothing we do satisfies us. Nothing thrives. Onesimus worked and did not benefit from it, nor was he satisfied from it. In Psalms 127, 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, thy labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. In verse 12, Paul asks Philemon to receive Onesimus as if it were him. Onesimus left as a slave, but now after he was met with Jesus, he returned to his master, asked for forgiveness to put things in order with him. Onesimus was received in his master's home like a friend, like a brother, like a family member. From a slave to a son he went. When Onesimus accepted Christ, a resounding change happened in his life. From slave to truly free. From slave to son. From living aimlessly to living with goals. From restless peace from being ignored to being loved, from cowardice to courage, from lies to truth. How interesting. This experience must be ours too. And this depends on your choice, dear friends. In John 1, 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. In verse 18 of Philemon it says, If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee, owe it, put the account on my account. Onesimus mis misbehaved before Philemon. He let him down, but Paul interceded for him and told him, I will pay for your wrongdoings. This reminds me of what the word of God says in 1 John 2, 1. It says, My little children, these things are right I unto you, that ye not sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. It is so good to know that we have a great lawyer whose name is Jesus. He will defend me, and with him I will become more than conquerors. I remember the story that took place many years ago. The newspapers printed a story about a miner whose body had been found hanging from a tree in a lonely spot by some barracks in Wallace County. A piece of paper was stuck to the chest of this suicide victim. It simply said that his act was a result of a crime he committed 30 years ago. He had murdered a girl. And this horrific memory haunted him all these years. The worst thing about this was that an innocent man had been convicted and executed for the murder instead of him. When the suicide victim's body was found, a farmer said he was not surprised by the act. Because when he had previously talked to the man, he learned that he frequently spoke about the dismemory because having lived and gone from place to place, he never found a moment of peace. Remorse haunted his soul. He couldn't forgive his horrific act. The weight of it was like a milestone hanging around her neck. And it's still like a snake in his chest. Dear friends, we will never find relief and peace in life if we don't go to find the feet of Jesus Christ. It is only through Jesus' great sacrifice that we obtain power to truly be free, to be released from the prison that we are in, and to have a clean conscience so that we can live in peace and tranquility, I invite you to pray with me. Dear Father, we thank you infinitely for your love. We ask you to touch our hearts at this time. 
Maybe we've run far away from you like Onesimus did. But, Lord, have mercy on us. Teach our lives, our hearts, that we can give ourselves entirely to you. Help us make our lives right with you. Thank you for your love and kindness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Don't miss the next lecture entitled, Free Forever. We recommend that you sign up for our free Bible course, you can request them by writing to info at biblewell.org or to the WhatsApp number that is here on the screen. We also invite you to visit our website www.biblewell.org. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video.